Today is Friday, September 18th, and today I'm thinking about God's Word. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And I think that KJV version of the Bible is the best way that we can read God's Word. And the reason I'm making this video is because it's still something that I get comments on all the time. People trying to talk down on what I believe is the best version of the Bible that we have. And most commonly what they do is they do this appeal to the ancients type thing or appeal to authority. They'll say, oh, you got to go read the ancient Greek manuscripts or, oh, you got to go read ancient Hebrew. God didn't make it difficult for us to find his word. It's been here the whole time. One of the big points of waking up that I've realized is that the truth has always been in front of us. And the way that Satan operates, Satan doesn't want to just hide everything from everybody and make everybody completely ignorant of everything. That That's not what Satan wants to do. What Satan wants to do is present the truth to everybody clearly hidden in plain sight, but then to get you to reject that and to mock it. And so that's what I believe the KJV is. I don't even want to get into King James or talk about it. For all I know, King James is a totally made up person. And that's why I don't, I try to not call it the King James version because I don't even know that King James is a person. Jesus Christ is the only king as far as I'm concerned. And that's why I typically say KJV I don't know that King James was even a person. I don't care about people will come try to say that King James was a Mason. You're going to have to first prove that such a person even existed to begin with. All I know is that when I read the KJV version of the Bible, it speaks to me. And it's so full of truth. And it's always been there right in front of us. And I think it's something that there's just consensus on that people know that there's something special about this version of the Bible. And I believe that people are either misguided or snakes, people who are trying to tell you, oh, don't pay attention to that version of the Bible, it's not good. You got to go read these ancient manuscripts. Well, what? the What the authority tells us is ancient? So that's just an appeal to authority. And salvation is not like that. Salvation is not this thing that is super secret and you have to go learn this ancient language in order to figure it out. Salvation is freely available to everybody. And that's why I think the best version of the Bible that we have is in English, or what we call English today, because that's just the biggest language today. And I'm sure some people will try to talk about Chinese or whatever, but think of how many Chinese people learn English. Okay, and now think of how many English-speaking people decide to just learn Chinese. There's clearly more non-English learning people that learn English. And I do think that in this language, we have the best Bible, KJV. And I don't believe the history that they tell us about this Bible. To me, it's so readable. And I think part of why it's so readable has to do with the English language in general. And I could talk about this for a long time, so I'll just say what I believe really quickly. I believe English is a revived form of ancient Chaldean. And I guess I'll kind of just leave it at that. It's something that you can research on your own if you want to. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And this is something that gets corrupted. You know how scientists these days, they push the Big Bang. Even though I believe that the person that came up with the Big Bang Theory was a Jesuit, actually. Somebody working in the churches. A snake. A wolf in sheep's clothing. And it's clearly ripping off this idea of, in the beginning was the word... And that's why they say Big Bang. Big Bang equals 33, by the way. Also has alliteration, BB. And it's bang. It's a sound. So they're just corrupting this biblical idea. John chapter 1 also shows us that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And the word, capital W, was made flesh. Jesus. 
and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Truth has brought so many of us to Jesus Christ. Jesus is the truth. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So salvation is easy. And that means that we don't have to jump through a zillion loops to be saved. And it means that yeah, we don't have to learn ancient Hebrew in order to be saved or understand God's word. We don't have to learn ancient Greek to understand what Jesus was telling us. We already have the inspired word of God, and it's KJV Bible. You don't have to go scour through ancient... How can you even believe them? We know that everything that they tell us about history is a big lie. So when they tell you that they dig up some manuscript in a cave... How do you know that they didn't make that thing last week? The Bible has always been there. And like I referenced earlier, what Satan likes to do is give us the truth, but then mock it and get us to reject it. So Genesis 1 has always been there from the beginning. You know, uh, for our our lifetime, we've, we've always had Genesis 1 in front of us. That explains things clearly. We don't need to go to the ancient Hebrew to see the word firmament. And so just the point I'm making here is I hate it when people come out of the woodwork and try to bash on what I believe is the best version of the Bible. You don't have to go learn ancient tongues to know the word of God. We already have it. It's already in front of us. Don't let people make you doubt the best thing that we have available. And... So this Chaldean thing, I guess I'll just say a few things. I want to keep this brief. I don't ever want to go off onto huge tangents for these daily videos. They're just supposed to get you thinking. Isn't it strange how the Chaldean numerology system uses the same alphabet that we have? And I think it's really interesting that a lot of words... It'd be nice if there were some lists out there. I don't know if anyone knows if anyone has compiled lists of, you know, popular words that equal 33... And it would be interesting to see the Pythagorean words that are 33 and the Chaldean words that are 33. I still don't really see that many people that use Chaldean, but a lot of old words like ampersand, that's what they call the fancy and sign. You know, the, the strange looking sign that means and ampersand is 33 in Chaldean. And I see a lot of 33 Chaldean words and they seem like old like these words were around a long time ago. And 33, of course, there's so much stuff out there on 33. They don't hide this stuff. It's just in school, they don't tell you that this stuff is really important to those who control the earth right now. They're obsessed with gematria and speaking in, in symbols. And that's a big part of school is they want you to think that, oh, symbolism is just a literary thing that really boring books are full of really boring symbolism. And that's what school makes you think that symbolism is. They don't want you to think that everyday people talk in symbols and that it's actually kind of simple how they speak in symbols. Orange 33, if you can know Orange 33, that's enough to wake up to so much of their symbology right there. So master number, number 33. Chaldean, Kabbalah, Pythagorean. So just my question is, why does the Chaldean numerology system work so well for English, what we call today English words? And I think that the English language is actually revived Chaldean. And what they tell us about English, oh, they tell us that English is a bunch of languages kind of mushed together. I think that's probably backwards. I think a lot of languages probably came from English. And yeah, so it's just a, another thing that they probably tell us the complete opposite. They tell us that English is a mashup of languages, but it's probably the other way around. English is probably the source for a lot of different languages. 
Hidden in plain sight. Look at the bright orange. Hidden in plain sight. What aren't you seeing? And a lot of stuff gets hidden in plain sight, and I think that just the KJV Bible is one of those things. We've always had it here. It's always been known to be the most famous version of the Bible, and I, I think it's just because what Satan has to do is present people with the truth, but then get them to reject it, to get them to doubt what is right in front of them. That's just a big MO that I see. Look at the 33 with the Dead Sea Scrolls. The discovery of a second cave eventually yielded 300 fragments from 33 manuscripts. So why are you going to go and believe what the experts tell you? By now you should know that what the experts tell you is a bunch of BS. People love to come and try to tell you that your version of the Bible, if it's KJV... You know, I, I don't see these people bashing NIV like they should be. So I just... It's one of the things that makes me the most upset when people try to bash the KJV version of the Bible because I strongly believe it's the best thing that we have available. Don't listen to people sending you on some wild goose chase to go learn an ancient language. Ain't nobody got time for that right now. There's no way that these people have totally exhausted studying what we already have in front of us, KJV, and I think that, yeah, they're either misguided or sending you on some sort of wild goose chase. What, you want to go listen to what the homo ancient Greeks, the pedo homo ancient Greeks had to say? Why are you appealing to these people? The synagogue of Satan? Why are you telling people to go read ancient Hebrew if what are called the Jews today are the synagogue of Satan? Why are, do you think that what they have to say is good and true? So I don't believe anything that the experts tell me. And this is just my personal belief. I feel in my heart that God already preserved his word for us and the inspired word of God is already here for so many of us to understand with the King James version of the Bible. Again, I don't know that King James was even a real person. I just call it the KJV Bible usually. And it's, I believe it's perfect. I believe it's everything that we need. I don't think we need to go learn ancient anything. And maybe the King James Version of the Bible is ancient. I just think it's really interesting how readable it is. I don't really believe the story that they tell us about it. So I don't know. Do they tell us it was written in the 1600s or something like that? History at that point is just complete hearsay at this point. So I don't believe any of what they tell us about where this version of the Bible came from. And so all I know is that I can read it and see it for the truth it is, and I love the majesty of language, and I don't think that people should be telling others that they need to go be researching a bunch of ancient things, that it's all an appeal to authority. You just got to trust the experts what the oldest or best version is, when I think that the truth has been right in front of us this whole time. There's a reason that it's the most famous version of the Bible. God bless everyone.